in the online education sector, NPTEL is the most accessed library of uh, peer review peer reviewed ed educational content in the world and is entirely free. I welcome uh, Sri uh, Suril Mittal, Chairman Bharati Enterprises. Today, when we work from home, it is becoming a new normal. Bharati Airtel's digital infrastructure is providing the mission internet support to crores of individuals and enterprises. Let me ask for inauguration of under, undersea optical uh, fiber link between Chennai and Andaman Nicobar Island in August 2020. Serving the underserved and unserved is the guiding principle of ISO and I am extremely glad that Airtel shares those values also. I am extremely happy to welcome Sri Anand Mahendra, Sub Chairman Mahindra Guru. Let me first compliment uh, Mr. Anand Mahindra and his uh, team for launching India's most iconic passenger vehicle on 15th August 2020. It promises to explore the impossible. ISRO also shared this vision of exploring the impossible. We have, uh, I am sure that all of us present in today's webinar at one time or another would have benefited from their products. I am assuming that, that they will all be uh, playing a critical role in ensuring the availability of viable vaccine for our 1 billion plus population. Coming back to today's webinar, it is a full day event divided into four sessions and details will be presented later by scientific secretary. However, let me briefly elaborate on the purpose of the space sector reforms, which government introduced and which is going to be a real game change in the space sector in India. You all know that private sector participation in the space program has been increasing worldwide. Private sector participation in space sector is a healthy trend as it increases the diversity in the space program. In India, we also have seen space sector startup taking up developmental activities in both the launch vehicle as well as the satellite field. However, there was no mechanism available in the country to extend any kind of technology or infrastructure support to them. Moreover, there was no regulatory mechanism to control the private sector activities because space activities, it is not a normal activity. It is having a lot of strategic importance. But also that you know that our, uh, it have a lot of risky elements also there. And being government of India is a signatory to the, uh, to the international community, any space activities, any destruction or anything happen, the responsibility, whether it's by government of India from, uh, agency or by private agencies, this has to be responsibilities with lies with the government of India. This is the reason we want a mechanism to regulate these activities. As part of ongoing reform, government of India has now created an institutional mechanism within the Department of Space known as Indian National Space Promotion and Authorization Sector, that is in space. Uh, the, the space sector reforms in the Vikram Sarabhai's engineering year is of great symbolic value as it aims to widen the space industry base within the country. In addition, the New Space India Limited, a central PSU, has been empowered to carry out routine launches with industry-realized PSLV and the satellite. 
when space flight time reforms were announced by the government, there were many misconceptions like it would lead to privatization of ISRO. It is no. Again, again, I am repeating, it is not the privatization of ISRO. In fact, the whole mechanism, the whole aim of the system is enabling the private people to carry out the space activity, which otherwise being done by ISRO. It is not privatization of ISRO. And in fact, that the activities of ISRO are going to increase with the time, and ISRO will be able to better utilize its resources in taking up the developmental as well as capacity building activities of the government of India rather than the routine production activities. Mainly, we are going to concentrate on the technology development, capacity building, and the high, the increasing our uh, activity to the level of international uh, level. So, in addition to that, ISRO will also fa facilitate private sector participation in major national missions through announcement of opportunity. However, one important aspect which has to be made clear again is that private sector will have to do their own research and development activities, development activities, business viability studies, funding, as well as finding customers for their services, which are always right now being done by use of which we are giving, allowing the private people to carry out this activity. The role of InSpace will be limited to providing technical know-how and infrastructure support in gap areas and same time promotion and the ideas and advices. In addition, InSpace will also act as a regulatory body for private sector, private activities, space activities. One thing which has emerged during this pandemic is the importance of health as well as self-reliance. Good health is essential for high productivity. Government is taking proactive steps to make our country self-reliant in many areas. As part of this process, import of communication satellite is now in the embargo list. I am extremely happy that the government has taken such step for step under that Atman Nibar border. And I am sure that this is going to continue and we are going to depend more and more on self-reliance. The capacity expansion on in 4G services and introduction of 5G services will require large number of communication satellites to be launched in the immediate future. This could be a huge opportunity for ISO, ENSIL, and more importantly, for the private sector players. And I want not ISO or ENSIL, the private sector should get into this business. They have a lot of potential in this area. Launching small satellite is another area where there is a huge projected demand. And I am very happy that some of the startups are uh, initiated this activity. They are interacting with us. I am very happy that they are in very advanced stage and they are going to launch their launch vehicles very soon. With in space mechanism in place, ISO is gearing up to handhold as well as provide all possible support in terms of technology and infrastructure to ensure that your space endeavors succeed not only at national level but also at a global level. And I'm sure that academia, industry, as well as startup will make use of this opportunity in the right earnest and will contribute towards achieving self-reliance in the critical space sector technology. Thank you, Jay The small gamut of today's discussion, you have very nicely uh, encapsula encapsulized and uh, told. So, with the permission of uh, the uh, dignitaries here, I will very quickly go through a, a, a presentation on the uh, reforms that has been put forward, uh, detailing what Dr. Shivan has just now detailed. I will share the presentation now.
i hope uh, the presentation is visible to all of you yes is the presentation visible to all of you sir yes yes it is thank you okay so i will just uh, uh, go through the unlocking of india's potential in space sector so uh, the department of space as you are aware uh, uh, carries out the end to end space activities uh, which include one second yeah which includes uh, as uh, the design development and realization of launch vehicles we have uh, design and development and realization of the spacecrafts the uh, launch and post launch activities and space based services so this uh, the, uh, these four uh, major verticals define the activities of uh, department of space and uh, how do you carry out these activities uh, we have we need to have infrastructure and facilities of various resource centers which are being extensively used for this research carried out in academia Uh, and may maybe uh, uh, all of you are aware more than 500 industries are involved in these uh, activities and they produce the components and uh, uh, it is indeed uh, uh, noteworthy that 80% of the launch vehicle and 60% of the spacecraft budget is spent in industry uh, this message uh, or this in this particular fact may not be known to many people that's why we wanted to stress this point and uh, what is what what is the kind of activities that is emerging in the space sector now if you look at it uh, the space based services and applications have grown in multitude uh, much more than uh, that what we, we really envisage we really thought they have uh, spiraled and the demands and the requirements are uh, phenomenal uh, uh, and this particular demand can be uh, really uh, made use of they have a huge commercial potential and the private sector as on now is engaging in space activities and they are much eager now we are getting lot of inputs a lot of discussions are coming a lot of people are coming forward for making the launch vehicle for making the satellites and especially providing the space based services so uh, definitely it, it, it is a fact and we very strongly believe that part of this participation of the private sector in the end to end space activities is uh, definitely uh, a, a, a a strategy to expand the space economy <clears throat> and the, uh, the 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 major uh, reform or the major announcement or the major decision that the government of india has uh, recently done is the opening of the space sector and uh, uh, the, a, a series of reforms have been suggested then the government of india has approved the space sector reforms for the greater participation of the private sector in these activities so what what are these activities the private sector is allowed now to carry out end to end space activities through suitable enabling mechanism we have made announcement of opportunity to the industries to come forward with uh, new technologies and new processes and isro will definitely as uh, the secretary do is told will focus on development of new technologies and at the same time enabling the sharing of its facilities to the private sector as we are aware isro is having a huge uh, infrastructure and especially uh, many of the uh, facilities or uh, uh, the kind of uh, uh, test uh, uh, equipments that we have may not be available in the country and uh, it is it is always worthwhile to uh, engage the private sector in utilizing these things so that it it it, uh, it is a win win situation wherein the private sector also need not invest for in those uh, infrastructure and we also have uh, department of space has uh, uh, new space india limited nsil which is our uh, public sector unit uh, to own operational launch vehicles satellites and services i will i will at a later uh, uh, chart or later slide i will dwell upon the new space india limited the 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 gamut and the requirements or the uh, the, the responsibilities of nsil has been changed or added augmented so uh, let me also uh, uh, reiterate here 
that as uh, uh, dr shivan uh, specifically told the the idea of these reforms is does not mean that isro is getting privatized this we want to stress here because uh, 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 the the basic idea is uh, uh, unlike the earlier times or the present times where the entire activities re related to space is being carried out by isro end to end we are now enabling the private sector also to carry out their space activities be it a launch vehicle making be it a satellite making or be the be it the space related services the space the the private enterprises are allowed to carry out their activities and as i told earlier for that we need a mechanism to enable them to promote them to handhold them at the same time to regulate them so that is a mechanism that we are introducing here so that uh, uh, things will be much more easier and user friendly for the private sector to carry out their operations at the same time it also should be noted that the primary purpose of this activity is also to see that the the burden on the government is re getting reduced and the private sector is encouraged to invest more on such activities to carry out their space based activities so what does the private sector can do what we feel or what we envisage is as i said earlier the building of the launch vehicles and providing the launch services building and launching satellites owning satellites and operating them and providing the space based services these are the four major pillars that we feel that the private sectors can actively engage so what does the do do dos will do dos will enable these private players to accomplish whatever i told earlier the space activities how do we do that we have to promote and handhold these private players to enable them and we uh, we we can share our facilities our expertise our technology our knowledge and as a, as the case may be it can be free of cost or it may be at a reasonable cost which can be worked out uh, case by case and we, definitely a mechanism is required to do that so that the most important thing is a creation of a national level autonomous nodal agency is an independent agency which is going to permit and monitor the private sector space activities uh, as per the defined regulatory provisions and permit the usage of isro facilities as per the private sector's requirements and promote and handhold these private players so a mechanism is required and uh, that is what dr shivan was mentioning in his address and for all these things one of the primary requests we feel is the enactment of the space activity bill as you are already aware the space activity bill is in its almost it's in final shape now we have already uh, presented it to the uh, our uh, ministry uh, pmo for uh, uh, giving the uh, for doing the inter ministerial consultation and we feel that very soon uh, this uh, this will be uh, uh, cabinet approve this will be approved by cabinet and presented to parliament for uh, making it an act Uh, this is mandatory because as you know india is a signatory to the outer space treaty so uh, uh, this activity bill which defines what are all the regulations and what are all the kind of uh, liabilities that will have is uh, essential so the mechanism what is the mechanism that we are introducing it is the uh, the uh, the establishment of uh, an indian national space promotion and authorization center in space which is again an autonomous nodal agency under the department of space which will which will be doing the enabling the promotion and hand holding of the industries building of the launch vehicles and satellites uh, sharing of the sort of facilities as i told earlier establishment of facilities in dos premises that's very important many of these facilities may not be available outside especially I, if you talk about having a launch pad because each of these uh, private enterprises may be coming out with their own launch vehicles and the present interfaces may not be adequate or it may not suit so uh, what we are telling is that we will enable them to establish the launch pads in those premises uh, uh, and definitely the launch campaign and launch has to be authorized and uh, they they need uh, the licensing and the regulatory mechanisms or approvals for the space based services and another very important and very responsible uh, uh, act activity that in space needs to carry out is a drawing up of an integrated launch manifest which is based on uh, because you know now there are three sets of players in the space sector now based on this we have the isro 
we have the nsil which takes care of the commercial requirements of isro and we have the private sector so there is definitely there, there can be conflict of interest there can be conflict with respect to time with respect to facility with respect to resources so uh, 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 all approved or all agreeable uh, uh, an integrated launch manifest will be required and in space is now uh, assigned the responsibility of doing that job now what is the architecture of inspace it is an empowered national body it has a board uh, i will come to the constitution of the board and apart from the board it has its own directorates which takes care of the uh, many of the various uh, facets of the activities related to inspace we have a technical directorate we have a, a legal directorate we have a safety and security directorate and we have a single directorate uh, of for monitoring and uh, promotion activities so what the, the basically what will happen is the private players or the ensil or isro will be the part will be the uh, act as a uh, act as applicants and they will be applying to the uh, in space uh, secretariat and the the directorates will go through those applications and accordingly advise the board to give the uh, appropriate directives and appropriate decisions and the board will act based on the uh, away, the the uh, inputs from the space activity bill the different policies we have very specifically mentioned here the satcom policy the remote sensing policy the navigation policy and we have some more in, in, uh, which is in the annual i will i'll be explaining that in a later stage and based on this they will give a directive so that then they will be permit the space activities by private players the integrated launch manifest they will make uh, the launch campaign and the launch also they will permit and they will also uh, depending on the requirement and the isro's requirements they will be allowing the sharing of isro facilities also so this uh, very briefly represents the various activities that in space needs to carry out now <clears throat> it will have the in space uh, will have a, a, a very defined institution with its own cadre for managing its various activities like secretariat activities the administration and the activities of the directorates uh it will be chaired by a secretary grade officer uh, and it is fully empowered to take absolutely independent unbiased decisions and the composition of the board will have it will have members from in space itself especially the directors of the directorates then members from industries the members from academia and definitely members from dos and and what is mandated now is whatever decisions that in space makes will be binding on all the stakeholders they have to do and uh, in as i told earlier there is a directorate for monitoring and uh, promotion and the, the that inbuilt monitoring mechanism ensures that implementation of the decisions are properly done and in case of any uh, any any uh, conflict in case if it arises we have our space commission and above that we have uh, a, the existing tdsat uh, which can be which is proposed now as an appellate body for res resolving the conflicts now again coming to the composition of the in space as i said there will be secretary secretary great person as chairman and we have full time members as part of in space we will have members from industry academia and from dos and the directorates as i mentioned earlier we have a technical directorate safety and security directorate legal directorate and promotion and monitoring directorate the promotion and monitoring directorate also have the responsibility to see that the quality reliability are also maintained now we, i i am giving a uh, two examples uh, to uh, indicate or to uh, make you aware that uh, the entire process we want to streamline and make it user friendly and simple without any complication so that is why these uh, next two slides uh, we are depicting that basically uh, the uh, the application by the private player will be given to the office in an online portal as i said earlier the technical directorate the legal directorate and the other directorates will go through that and uh, the in space board will review it and the permission will be granted for a particular activity as sought by the applicant and uh, uh, these activities while it is carrying out will be monitored by the promotion and monitoring directorate and the appropriate feedbacks will again go to the board so that it's a complete uh, closed loop system uh, uh, which makes the entire process very stable 
and we also have the provision to see that these, these activities are regularly apprised to the space commission so uh, this uh, this brings uh, uh, the a very unambiguous and a transparent procedure to all and uh, as i said earlier we have provisions for resolution of disputes if at all anything is coming and the application process uh, uh, for example if somebody wants to share uh, the facility of isro they can directly apply on, on online portal the in space board will discuss based on the inputs given by the various uh, directorates and it will uh, give a decision and it will identify the uh, the the facility that is required which is available in the isro facility and uh, will inform directly to the uh, the the applicant or the private player as well as it will inform the uh, center uh, the facility in charge uh, uh, of the center where the the facility is go going to be utilized and the activity will be carried out and as i said earlier the closer system will uh, total, uh, automatically act through the promotion and monitoring directorate so the system is very simple and straightforward no complications and in case they want to establish a facility as i said earlier the same process is followed uh, uh, the uh, the space allocation facility establishment the board will decide it will be informed to the concern center as well as the the the, the applicant and the closed loop system will act so we feel that this simplified mechanism will work very in a very seamless manner and uh, we also have isro has also announced uh, the or announcement of opportunities for the private sector has been also already done it will identify the cutting edge technology areas which uh, industry can uh, look into and uh, uh, basically aid the activities of uh, isro space activities and uh, we we also plan to give opportunities in selected science and exploration missions uh, uh, to the industry and definitely technology spin offs will be offered for a mass production what we are trying to say is that uh, this the technology that we are using for space can be modified for uh, commercial use and that product the modified product from the space technology can be uh, mass produced for the uh, public use so that 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 will be a huge benefit to the country now uh, uh, as a part of this or a starting of this we have already announced the opportunities for the human in space flight program uh, and the, the 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 last date is 31st august 2020 all the details are given in isro website where in various uh, phases or various activities related to the space flight flight program has been announced for example like debris management and mitigation space bioengineering radiation hazards characterization uh, thermal protection so etc so a uh, gamut of uh, uh, activities are identified and uh, we have we already have a, a very good response and uh, we we feel that this will be a huge uh, Im this will make a huge impact in the whole of uh, uh, indian uh, academia and the, and the students as well as the industry and now let me come back to ensil as i told earlier ensil is the psu of isro which is mandate earlier the mandate uh, uh, of ensil was ex exclusively like uh, the production of uh, pslv and our sslv small satellite launch vehicle production through the indian industry uh, uh, then of course providing the launch services for customer satellites and space based services and uh, technology transfer to indian industry these were the scope of uh, uh, ensil and uh, the uh, ba basic idea was that the commercial exploration of isro space production services should be focused and indian industry's growth also should be encouraged now the total mandate has been enhanced now ensil is mandated to own the satellites and providing space air services on commercial basis this is a, is a, is a, is a quantum uh, change or quantum jump i would say and a, a, it is also mandated to build satellites and launch them as per the demand as i said earlier the whole process uh, has been changed to a demand driven from supply driven that is a, that is a that is a, that is a huge a uh, 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 strategic change i would say uh, the ensil also has mandated to provide launch services for customer satellites it is mandated to build launch vehicles uh, not only pslv but sslv gslv gslv mark 3 and the future launches that isro is going to further make and uh, it, it also should enable satellite building through indian industry 
and as i said that remains technology transfer to industry is still there and so that the scope has changed it is becoming highly complex and capital intensive activities the performing the operational missions of isro is a huge responsibility and it also involves owning the satellites and space space assets so uh, it, it it encel ultimately will act as a satellite operator itself so this is a huge change and encel is actively gearing up for taking up this responsibility and carrying it out so as i said earlier all these are uh, uh, possible only if you have a, a real uh, a st- infrastructure or a structure uh, for the regulation and authorization and control so uh, the space activity bill is a mandatory for this but definitely it is not uh, the space activity bill will not be uh, uh, a real uh, prerequisite for carrying carrying out the initial activities of these uh end to end space activities that private industries can start now itself but ultimately at the time of the the, the final uh, uh, act act like launching or making a satellite and giving it for launch etc before that this regulatory mechanism will be definitely required so it defines the space activities and associated risks and liabilities that's the most important part and defines the regulatory norms uh then the policies are also extremely important so the present satcom policy and remote sensing policies has already been revisited a, 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 to a, a series of committees have already reviewed um, the the new uh, the new i new uh, strategy that we have involved are included in that policies and that has been already reviewed and uh, very soon these policies are going to be announced and introduced apart from that as you are aware we are getting into the navigation aspects and the applications in a very big way so there is a need for in, in uh, evoking a navigation policy this also is almost on the finishing stages apart from these three policies we also now feel based on our discussions that we need to have a space exploration policy and also we need to have a launch vehicle uh, po- kind of uh, policy so these are this also as we uh, are being worked out so that it will bring more clarity with respect to the private uh, players or the private enterprises as to how to plan and uh, strategize their specific activities so with this uh, let me conclude i think i have covered the whole gambit uh, of the uh, of the uh, reforms that we are planning in a in a reasonably in a short uh, presentation i hope uh, it it satisfies many of the questions that uh, people are uh, expecting uh, answers so with this uh, let me conclude thank you very much and now <coughs> let us get into the uh uh space of uh, uh, getting the uh, valuable suggestions inputs and thought processes of uh, our uh, dignitaries so let me first uh, welcome uh, professor uh, vijay raghavan the uh, principal scientific advisor to uh, prime minister uh, 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 professor vijay raghavan is uh, i i don't have to give any introduction to professor vijay raghavan as far as we are concerned we we feel that he is part and parcel of uh, department of space and isro he is one among us uh, at the same time uh, let me also say that you also know that uh, the 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 important uh, roles it is a multifaceted role as chairman was rightly saying he is uh, fully involved in the space reforms and activities he is fully involved in the generation of vaccine so you see the Uh, the the kind of uh, the broad spectrum that uh, jiragan sir is uh, getting engaged i think i i don't want to dwell much on sir sir we are really privileged to have you here and let me welcome kindly give your thought process and your suggestions for this sir um uh, thank you very much uh, dr uma maheshwaran uh, thank you dr shivan for having me here and i'm uh, particularly privileged to be amongst my uh, co panelists uh, ms mahima datla Mr. Anand Mahendra and Professor M S Anand. Um, actually, the um, Professor Anand, Mr. Mahendra, and Mahima Datla, Mr. Mahima Datla, point out to what the extraordinary um, opportunities which we have if we grasp them. We have between them uh, in industry two very different kinds of industry, and which normally, normally, I mean. 
until December 2019, you wouldn't have thought that these two kinds of industries would be talking to each other that much. I think that Professor Anand would be talking to these two kinds of industries on a literally minute to minute or a day to day basis. While there would be all sorts of collaborations, our principal jobs uh, in various sectors was to bemoan the presence of siloed mentality and how we could break them and get people to work together. Then, you know, uh, very sort of as a bolt uh, from the blue, even though it was expected, the pandemic struck. And it is remarkable to see how academia and industry of all kinds work together to address problems. The vaccine industry and the manufacturing industry, those making PPEs, those making ventilators, uh, our academic institutions, our mathematicians, people who were never connected with disease biology, all of them came together with speed. This points out to some fundamental value which we now need to amplify uh, using the space sector as a model and take to other sectors. What is that fundamental value? That fundamental value is at the foundation, you need extraordinary core capabilities cutting across disciplines in science and technology, in humanities, sociology, economics, and everything. If you have that core capability, then you are prepared for the unknown which can come upon you and you can rejig to do anything. That's the important point. Then the other aspects become important. We need to have a connect to industry. Industry needs to be nimble. Government needs to have a regulatory framework which is accessible to all yet robust. These things follow and the space sector reforms point to that. I'd like to add on this foundation another challenge. Some maybe a year and a half or two years ago, there was a meeting in which Arun Mahindra was there. And we asked, why is it that industry is not investing sufficiently, his industry invests uh, sufficiently in R&D. And he pointed out something very important. He said, it's not that industry doesn't have capital. Industry doesn't have risk capital. If you look at the kinds of resources which big companies all over the world put in into R&D, each company puts in more than the funds of the entire US National Science Foundation in their R&D. If Indian industry is to be competitive in that situation, risk needs to be mitigated. Now, the solution to that risk mitigation comes from people in environments such as Professor Environments. Our research institutions, our universities, the best amongst them, have extraordinary talent, very well trained, uh, and IIT Madras is a particular example of that. Um, but also there are extraordinary resources, material resources of it. So this combination of talent and material resources, when partnering with industry, allows risk to be mitigated. And for every 10 rupees of industry's investment, there's about 90 rupees of investment in kind, which an academic environment can bring in terms of talented people, not only you know, in one location, but across not only you know, in one location, but across locations in India, the talent is there and across the world. So this partnership between industry and academia on risk mitigation is something which can be done, whether it is in manufacturing and AI or in vaccines and so on, and in partnering with uh, groups in the Indian Institute of Science, groups in the Indian Institute of Science to develop vaccines. Indian vaccine manufacturers were well known for their manufacturing. But today they're grasping opportunities in early stage development and research in a manner like never before. So this is a combination. Now overlay this combination of this academia industry partnership with the third, which is the enormous infrastructure capabilities and technological uh, core, which an organization like ISRO bring. And I know we're moving from, you know, a set of fields to a, what apparently is a narrower field of, you know, space alone. But space has two characteristics. Space has characteristics as a frontier and direct space applications on land, but it also has an enormous application in dual technologies, dual use technologies of various kinds. Those which can be used in space and those can, which can be used routinely on land. So this now combined the reforms in space, combined with this industry academia partnership, 
allows the opening up of the frontier to India like never before. I'd like to end by saying India is unusual in its space exploration in that we must give credit to ISRO and its you know, founders and its leaders over time who have constantly articulated space for society as its role. So space has had an enormous impact on society. With this opening up, space will have an impact not only on the space sector in India, but the space sector globally, and also on all sectors in India. India's presence in the space sector is characterized by a notable presence in volume. But in terms of the entire space industry's budget, India's role is minuscule. This is now an opportunity to increase both volume and quality in extraordinary ways. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Professor Vijayagon, sir, for a very valuable, very short, very concise, but uh, uh, loaded with uh, uh, suggestions and uh, uh, meanings. Thank you very much, sir. So uh, I think now let us uh, move on to uh, Sri uh, Patmapushan Anand Gopal Mahindra uh, group, uh, who always advocates uh, change the rules. So uh, this is an apt uh, time for you, sir, to uh, advise us how we are going to change the rules. Uh, and uh, um, most of you may be already aware uh, the Frontline magazine, the Fortune magazine uh, had uh, included uh, Mr. Mahindra as part of the world 50 greatest leaders. And also in the 2011 uh, listing, he was uh, listed as Asia's 25 most powerful business people. So over to Professor Anand Mahindra, a very powerful business magnate, uh, kindly advise us, sir. Thank you very much for that uh, very kind introduction. Dr. Shivan, your distinguished colleagues at ISRO, Vijay, Mahima, Professor Anand. You know, it was exactly on July 20th, 1969, which is 51 years and one month ago to the day that Neil Armstrong entered the history books by taking the first step on the moon. And no one who heard that news then can ever forget the impact that it made. There were new frontiers to push, new worlds to explore. Uh, literally, it was like seeing infinity unfold before us. Now, India is amongst only seven nations that have pushed that frontier ever further. Thanks entirely, of course, to the praiseworthy achievements of Israel. And I even have a vague recollection of seeing a photograph in the 80s or some sort of small satellite or satellite launcher being carried to the launch place by a bullet cart. So it's obviously been a very great leap forward from there to 2017 when ISRO's PSLV launched a record 104 satellites in one go with both indigenous and ingenious technology. And that was at a cost that made developed nations rub their eyes in disbelief. So today with Chandrayaan and the Mangalyaan missions successfully accomplished, we're reaching Moon and the Mars. And Gaganyaan, of course, will doubtless see Indian astronauts and Indian made rockets blazing new trails in space. Now that was the first frontier. Today, six decades after ISRO was founded, it's time to change the paradigm. The second space frontier is opening up. And that is the frontier of the commercialization of space. So it's time to make the shift from seeing ourselves as a space exploring nation to a space faring nation. So if you think of the way that the sea was developed, it started with the intrepid exploration of an unknown ocean. And then, of course, man began to use these oceans for trade, commerce, transport, overseas expansion, even warfare, unfortunately. But as these activities expanded, legal and institutional frameworks, international and domestic both, they emerged to support these activities. And it's the same with the air. Uh, with airspace, the initial exploratory and technological phase of aeroplanes evolved into commercialization through airlines. 
And space, I think, is at a similar point today, and we are lucky enough to be in at the ground floor. Space may well become the new gold rush. And why this gold rush? Because there is gold at the end of the rainbow, plenty of it, for governments, for businesses, both. And it's a market that in 2018 was estimated at around $350 billion, expected to grow to a whopping $3.3 trillion by 2045. Now, India has an established and credible space program, but its share of the market is minuscule. And I'm hopeful that beginning today, that's going to change. I believe there are three major drivers that are going to propel the global space economy. Cost efficiency, frugal innovation, and high-end engineering skills. And happily, we possess all three in abundance. The success of Mangalyaan, Chandrayaan, PSLV, their high-class technology and their bargain basement costs provide visible proof that we tick all three boxes. And we also have proven capabilities in core market segments like telecom, video, earth observation, navigation, that are going to see very high rates of growth in the next several years. Now, apart from this, the demand in India alone for space-based applications and services is far exceeding the supply. Dr. Shivan, you've been quoted in an interview as saying that ISRO would have to be expanded to 10 times the current level to meet just the current demand. Now, frankly, this is something I find even more exciting, I have to admit, than sending astronauts into space. Why? Because technological advancement profoundly changes lives of people on Earth, and the faster, the better. ISRO has become a major change maker in India. So many areas of our lives are impacted by your activities, our entertainment, our communications, our security, weather forecasts, education, knowledge, even our ATMs owe something to ISRO. But there is no reason why ISRO should go it alone, and that's why we're here today. Imagine how much we could accelerate the pace of change by facilitating private players to take over much of this. It could free ISRO up to focus, as you said in your opening remarks, on high-level space exploration and strategic areas of national need. And it would enable private players to do good and do well, both at the same time, to make profits, as well as drive positive change in the lives of our citizens. Now, of course, there are going to be many challenges. Everyone knows that Elon Musk almost went bankrupt developing the Falcon before he launched it successfully on the fourth attempt. What is less well known is the fact that the Falcon 9 launch clocked in at one third the price of a traditional NASA contract launch. So even NASA with its bottomless money supply is trying to change its mindset and capital allocation policies to enable private players to collaborate with it and flourish. And for India, this is going to be a pivotal moment. It is our opportunity to level the playing field by leveraging our competitive advantages, and we have to seize it now. The question, of course, is how do we make these reforms work? Because industry and the public sector, let's admit it, are often uneasy bedfellows, as the saying goes. We each have different priorities, strategies, and aspirations. And yet a public-private joint endeavor is indeed the best way forward if you're going to leverage the window of opportunity that's opened up. Now, you're going to have speakers all day today who are far more qualified than I am to give you concrete suggestions and answers. But let me try and draw you a picture because I'm a sort of right-brained, visually-oriented person and I often think more in images than words. And the picture that comes to my mind is that of a legendary creature from Indian mythology whose two very different halves make a very unexpected whole. And I'm thinking of Vishnu in his avatar as Narasimha, half man, half lion. Now, this is a mythological analogy that I had used before many years ago when speaking at a NASCOM conference, but I think it applies here even more aptly. I'm visualizing an ecosystem for a public-private partnership that combines the knowledge and intellect of a human being with the fearlessness, the speed, the strength, and the killer instincts of a lion. That is the kind of ecosystem you may want to think about. It's an unconventional but effective amalgamation of different entities. 
Our Lord Vishnu took on the avatar of half man, half lion for a very specific reason. He had to tackle the demon Hiranyakashyap. And Hiranyakashyap, as we all know, had obtained a gift from the gods whereby he couldn't be killed inside or outside, by night or by day, on the ground or in the sky. And believing himself invulnerable, he ran amok. So people begged Vishnu, as the story goes, to save them, and he came as Narasimha. He had to overcome Hiranyakashyap without violating the terms of the gift, which of course seemed like an impossible task. And how did he do that? The short answer, by thinking differently. He dragged Hiranyakashyap into the courtyard, which was neither indoors nor outdoors. He did this at twilight, which was neither night or day. And he conquered the demon by breaking him across his knee, which was neither earth nor sky. So I would urge all of us to keep this story in mind as we deliberate on ways to unlock the space sector. Think of creating structures and systems that have never existed before. Think differently about achieving the goal, whether you're a public or a private player. Think of what support you might require from the law, from financial institutions, from regulators. Thank you, Professor Vijayagon, sir, for a very valuable, very short, very concise, but uh, loaded with uh, uh, suggestions and uh, uh, meanings. Thank you very much, sir. So uh, I think now let us uh, move on to uh, Sri Patma Bhushan Anand Gopal Mahindra. The ultimate goal is to create a uh, group uh, who always advocates uh, change the rules. So, uh, this is an apt uh, time for you, sir, to uh, advise us how we are going to change the rules. Uh, and uh, um, most of you may be already aware, uh, the Frontline magazine, the Fortune magazine, uh, had uh, uh, unfolded before us. And in 24, so India is amongst those in Russia that affect your distinguished colleagues at ISRO. Oh, we are going to change the rules. Uh, Frontline magazine, the uh, and all its 25 most powerful business powerful business magnate. A very kind introduction to bring their Dr. Shivan, the international space. Your distinguished colleagues at ISRO, and then let's Vijay, fast forward to Mahima, the Professor Anand. When Elon you know, it was exactly on July 20th, 1969, which is 51 years and one month ago to the day that Neil from the US. Elon Musk famously tweeted, Rogozin, the trampoline is working. In our case too, ladies and gentlemen, I hope we will succeed in building a trampoline that will literally take us to the stars. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, 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 Anand sir, for a very, very, uh, I would say, exciting and uh, thought-provoking uh, comments, especially your, uh, your uh, imagery with respect to Narasimha. I would like to add also here that he used his claws to kill him, which is not a conventional weapon. So uh, it is a very apt that you have told this, so that we need to have claws now in this. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, we will come back again. Now let us move on to uh, Srimati Mahima Datla. Madam is the uh, Managing Director of uh, Biological E Limited. Under her leadership, the Biological E has uh, demonstrated tremendous growth given the successful WHO pre-qualification and the launch of uh, pentavalent and uh, JE vaccines. Her presence is befitting and significant uh, today, especially considering the present COVID scenario. So, Madam, over to you for your thoughts. Thank you, Honorable Chair, uh, Professor Vijay Raghavan, Isro, and all of the colleagues on this panel. Thank you so much for this opportunity. I have to confess, I grew up uh, as a big fan of Star Trek. So in my mind, space is really the final frontier, capturing the imagination of not just uh, not just the imagination, but the hearts of people. And it really is a demonstration of bringing the best of human endeavor to fulfill and meet our aspirations. 
I have to confess, though, apart from that, I have no connection with this industry or no knowledge. And I find myself woefully inadequate to be part of this panel. That said, what I can offer to do is to draw some parallels between the reforms in the vaccine sector and the ones proposed here. And I'd like to draw these parallels across three different areas, which is R&D and innovation, offsetting fixed costs and large scale infrastructure, and creating an ecosystem that creates financial incentive and sustainability. Historically, vaccines were made by governments, and they did this in the interests of national security. They believed immunization was so important that it needed to be an endeavor undertaken by governments alone. What this led to is very few new vaccines being discovered against new infectious diseases. It also led to no incentive for the inefficiencies for creep that were creeping in into these industries. Today, by today, I think largely vaccine industry is privatized or is a public private initiative. And that was to address the innovation gap that everybody was experiencing. We ourselves are an example of the success of these partnerships. We partnered with the Indian Institute of Science of Bangalore for the hepatitis B vaccine. We're currently partnering with MIT, Baylor College of Medicine, National Institutes of Virology, TSHIT, CCMB, in our endeavors to make a COVID vaccine as quickly as possible. So we are examples of a success stories and there's several examples where the facilitation of private public partnerships, academia and industry has been extremely successful. The other point I'd like to make is vaccine in, in the vaccine industry, we always say this is a fixed cost business because much like you go through several checks before a launch, we have to undergo several steps before we undertake the development um, and the launch of a vaccine. And these involve extensive clinical studies in human beings in thousands of patients, but more importantly, it takes close to eight to 10 years for these vaccines to become available. But the main thing is vaccine manufacturing requires tremendous fixed costs in terms of the infrastructure that it needs. But because of the partnership model and technologies that came about of innovation, today we are talking about vaccines being made in a footprint like a bedroom of a house. We're talking about vaccines being made embedded into 3D printed strips that you can just stick on. While these technologies are years away, we've already seen that with the relaunch or the ability to have rockets that can be relaunched, the cost offsets were so significant uh, for the space industry. The third thing I'd like to talk about is creating an ecosystem that creates financial incentives. In the vaccine world, we call these as push and pull mechanisms. So the push mechanisms typically came, and the reason for this, just to take a step back, is that vaccines are meant for, you know, some of the poorest people in the world. So they need to be affordable in order to be accessible. And the financial incentive is not always cut clear. And R&D development costs for this tend to be extremely significant. So recognizing this, there have been two mechanisms created, which are called push and pull. And on the push mechanism side, we've seen the coming together of governments such, such as DBT in our own country through BIRAC, We've seen the Gates Foundation being heavily invested in this kind of work, but we've also seen pull mechanisms where demand generation for vaccines and early adoption was done through an organization called Gavi, which is the Global Alliance for Vaccines and Immunization. 
So in this context too, it's important that the financial incentives be created and the right ecosystem be created for this to be sustainable and for us to achieve a dream of being a huge player as part of that 3.3 trillion industry. In conclusion, paid off. Today, the vaccine industry in India is the number one by volume in the world. I don't know too many industries that have the luxury of, sorry about that, have the luxury of claiming that. And I'm convinced that we need to have the same kinds of reforms to see a huge transformation within the space sector. So I'll take my thanks there. Thank you so much for the opportunity to speak to an organization that the entire country is incredibly proud of. Uh, Madam Mahima, uh, you, for your very thought-provoking speech, you have uh, addressed uh, some three specific things, including the cost effectiveness and the, the private public uh, uh, partnership. You have stressed on that. Thank you very much. We'll come back uh, in the later uh, discussion session. Uh, let me also uh, welcome, uh, we have the pleasure of uh, having uh, Mr. Sunil Mittal uh, into our uh, panel of uh, dignitaries, I would say. Welcome, sir, uh, to, to this panel. Actually, we started at 11 o'clock and uh, after the introduction from Dr. Shivan, we made a small presentation, a brief presentation on the uh, reforms that uh, that we are contemplating and uh, the dignitaries are speaking sir now uh, now let me go, go over to professor anand uh, professor anand is a luminary academician he is a former director of iit uh, as you all know and uh, he was the director from 2001 to 2011 if i am correct uh, he has uh, he, he is, I, I don't have to read out his uh, uh, accomplishments as well as awards. It is mind boggling. And uh, he is a pioneer, as uh, uh, Dr. Shivan already told. He is a pioneer with respect to uh, the online education as well as uh, the uh, one of the one of the uh, first to start with uh, uh, the start the concept of startups and incubation in IIT Chennai. Uh, so, uh, sir, uh, we feel that from the academy section, you are one of the most uh, appropriate and the apt uh, uh, luminary to talk about these reforms, sir. So over to you, sir, uh, Professor Anand. So probably I think shall we move to Okay, we'll go ahead with the uh, Sunil so Mittal, so we can just try to join that video after. So, not problem. Yeah, okay, so just, just continue and then go ahead. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, Professor Anand is... Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think Professor Anand is trying to join. There's some bandwidth issue. He's, uh, he's, he'll come soon. So, I think we'll move on to uh, Patma Bhushan, uh, Sunil Bharati Mittal, sir. Uh, we are indeed uh, honored to have you here, sir. 
Sunil Bharati Mittal is a founder and chairperson of uh, Bharati Enterprises. I don't have to tell all these things. Everybody knows Bharati Airtel, the, the group's flagship company, is one of the world's largest and India's second largest telecom company with operations in more than 18 countries. His list of awards uh, is, uh, I, there is, I will have, I, I need hours to read out. One specific uh, thing which I thought I will share is that he was, uh, he won the Philanthropist Award for year uh, 2010. I think that uh, that gives a glimpse of the uh, kind of uh, uh, spectrum that uh, um, pro, uh, pro Mr. Sunil Mittal is involved. Uh, so thank you very much, sir. Uh, it's over to you for your uh, thoughts and comments. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, at the outset, let me thank uh, Dr. Sivan and all uh, the esteemed colleagues at ISRO who have invited me to be a part of this uh, wonderful initiative by way of this webinar. I have uh, grown up to watch uh, India's uh, activities in the space program with great interest. And as some of my earlier speaker colleagues mentioned, with great sense of pride. Uh, I am in the world of telecommunications ever since uh, the government of India allowed private sector participation in the telecom industry. And uh, this really goes back uh, to the year 1982-83, when I brought India's first push button phones into the country. And thereafter, the cordless phones, answering machines, fax machine, and launched India's first mobile telephony in 1994. So in some sense, uh, I have been the uh, long traveler on this uh, journey of digital uh, development in our country. And the privileged uh, few uh, in the private sector who were given an opportunity in our country to be a part of this uh, digital ecosystem. Uh, my relationship with space started when we uh, realized that the reach and depth of our terrestrial radio networks will remain uh, rather limited and we will need to lean back on VSAT to cellular backhaul some of our remote uh, locations, whether they were in Andamans or up in Ladakh. And uh, we started to use VSAT uh, for cellular backhaul and indeed for connecting many of our enterprise customers. And, uh, and I'm talking about 20 years back, and that is the time when our interaction with ISRO started. And one was amazed to see that uh, ISRO, uh, coming from an emerging, uh, uh, at that point in time, third world country, was really taking a leading position in the space program. And the knowledge, the depth of uh, you know, talent that one saw at ISRO was uh, really breathtaking. And I am really uh, very proud to share with all of you that uh, about two, two and a half months back when I was at 10 Downing Street uh, to finalize the bid for one web LEO satellite constellation, which the British government was uh, trying to acquire out of bankruptcy. And we were deciding whether to bid for it or not. When I met the prime minister uh, of uh, UK, Boris Johnson, uh, he mentioned these words uh, that uh, while India is emerging economy, uh, it is a first-rate power in space. And it's our ambition in the UK to catch up to that level of prowess in the space program. Uh, as you can imagine, my uh, chest was filled with pride that uh, here I'm talking to a first world, uh, you know, one of the leading uh, four or five economies of the world uh, who are looking at India to take inspiration for the space program. So. Uh, Dr. Simon, to you, to all your predecessors and all those people who make the magic at ISRO, uh, my very big compliments and congratulations to all of you. Uh, we also today are fortunate to have uh, a prime minister who is uh, very focused on uh, the development of our country. Importantly, a person who understands technology, understands the power of uh, technology and how it can take the agenda of digital India forward. And uh, it is therefore a testimony to his vision that very recently we saw the opening up of the space program for private sector participation in India. This is indeed a very heartening news for uh, all of us uh, who are in the digital space. And this will accelerate our program. While I know uh, ISRO has a uh, you know, multi-billion dollar budget, but given uh, what uh, NASA ends up spending and many other space uh, powers around the globe, including China, end up spending, I think the private sector participation will add more weight and heft to the space program of ISRO. 
I cannot imagine any one of us operating outside the overall guidance and ambit of ISRO. Most of us will lean on the talent that has uh, come out of ISRO over the last uh, decades. I have already had the pleasure of uh, uh, having a very deep interaction with Dr. Sivan and his senior colleagues. But equally, I have now uh, you know, started to speak to many of the ex-ISRO people uh, because that is truly the bedrock of our nation's uh, uh, you know, repository of um, uh, wisdom and talent in the area of space. It's also a matter of great pride for all of us that it's not only that we manufacture our own satellites and many components that go into it, but we build our own rockets and we have had several successful launches over the last decade. The INSAT program is uh, hailed across the globe and uh, the payload uh, uh, factors that we have had on our satellites are again uh, doing uh, all the fanciful services that are required in our daily lives, whether it is weather, whether it is broadcasting, or indeed some of the uh, leading applications in the area of science, uh, technology, and importantly, keeping our nation safe by catering to the needs of the defense industry. Uh, as a go forward, uh, while India has now launched its uh, uh, policy on uh, participation of private sector in the space program, my submission would be that we should build light touch uh, policies but uh, very strong policies in terms of security of a nation, foreign policy, and some of these guidelines need to be laid out very clearly so that the private sector participants know as to how we can operate in the overall policy framework for the benefit of our nation. Uh, uh, OneWeb is going to be the world's first LEO satellite constellation, uh, flying about 648 satellites at uh, 1,200 kilometers covering every inch of uh, the globe. And uh, it is a deep desire that along with um, our support and co uh, cooperation from ISRO, we get our landing stations for um, uh, landing rights for um, India, uh, putting up two or three ground stations in uh, you know, north, south, and probably western part of India, and start to deliver uh, these services uh, in the early part of 22, once the entire constellation is going to be up. We would have started to test by uh, the later part of next year itself, uh, 42 degrees uh, north, uh, where we will start to cover the polar, the upper northern Europe, and we would have started to test a lot of uh, ground and user terminals. It is here we would like to uh, see, um, you know, ISRO's hand uh, and uh, support at work to develop uh, user terminals, which uh, cater to the needs of uh, Indian requirements. As we are all aware, India needs affordable uh, rural broadband connectivity. Uh, and we also very clearly know that reaching fiber or even uh, terrestrial radio in some parts of uh, deep Nicobar, Himalayas, uh, the, uh, the ra deserts in Rajasthan, and the uh, forest, deep forest in um, uh, Madhya Pradesh is going to be almost an impossibility. But why should these people be deprived of um, uh, broadband connectivity. Uh, we have already earmarked a lot of areas in India where the benefits of uh, this Leo Constellation uh, broadband connectivity uh, will be made available. Uh, one of the highlights of the Leo Constellation is going to be low latency. Uh, we are currently testing some BMW cars. Uh, they are uh, showing great promise and uh, delivery at less than 32 milliseconds which becomes a game changer as opposed to the uh, geo satellites which have a latency of 560 milliseconds or even the MEOs which have uh, partial coverages around the globe at about 160 to 180 milliseconds. Uh, with uh, less than 50 milliseconds, you start to get uh, real-time uh, interactive uh, services, gaming, um, and of course, uh, the downstream and all which can also be done through geo. Uh, we will also seek to uh, you know, build a very strong rapport and uh, cooperation agreement with ISRO to see that the combination of a geo-leo constellation for Indian um, territory uh, is put to use where we can uh, you know, combine the strength and capacity requirements uh, of the nation by these two constellations. In closing, I would say India should be very proud of our forefathers. I think now you can see me, maybe. Uh, uh, Professor Anand Kumar, I'm just going to uh, conclude and then I'll hand it over back to our ISRO colleagues. I see. No, no, I think I've done it on the...
in conclusion i would say uh, there is a great degree of um, uh, head start um, uh, in the hands of india our forefathers saw the benefit of in the space program the very foundations of isros were laid by our forefathers vision and now we have a very visionary prime minister who is going to take this mission forward and i don't see um, uh, that we will be too far from uh, having our own uh, vehicle land on moon and one of our indians walk on the surface of moon in the coming years um, under the aegis and the patronage of uh, isro i would like to at uh, this stage um, uh, wish isro a great success in the coming days on the space program the new frontiers that will be achieved uh, will be in the space and most of the leading uh, nation states are putting enough uh, and more efforts to start to explore the uh, space program i personally feel that uh, with re reusable rockets uh, with new um, uh, you know generation of satellites the space program has started to become very exciting mm -hmm. and india i'm sure will take a leading part and we at bharti and airtel look forward to uh, being an in integral part of the efforts that india will put towards the space program thank you very much uh, uh, thank you uh, sunil mitra sir uh, for a very very uh, a uh, comprehensive and thought provoking uh, uh, input sir uh, let me introduce myself i am mom heshwaran i am scientific secretary isro so you joined late uh, uh, let me thank you for uh, very specifically your uh, first of all let us congratulate you once again for the fantastic achievement that you are going to plan with this one web it's very very exciting and already as uh, we have already started uh, interacting uh, with each other with respect to how to go forward uh, in in this endeavor so we are also ex uh, pretty excited with this endeavor sir so uh, uh, and you have also the, the touched upon the, the the policies which is as we discussed earlier also is extremely important it should be light touch as you showed as well as uh, it should be very strong with respect to our uh, security and safety is concerned so we will take this point sir now with this uh, thank yes. you once again yes sir one minute yes, Yes, I wanted to uh, just. Uh, if the uh, Mr. Sir was not there uh, when we started uh, this one, and uh, today when we work from home, it is become normal. This is the the all the actors, the digital infrastructure is providing the mission critical internet support to cross up individuals and the enterprises. Also, let me compliment the uh, Mr. Sir. For the inauguration of that undersea optic uh, fiber link between Chennai and Andaman Nicobar uh, in August 2020, is a major achievement that I would say. And uh, serving that un answered and answered is the guiding principle of ISRO. And I'm extremely glad that uh, Airtel also shared those values there. And I'm extremely happy that the uh, Mr. Sub has uh, come and uh, briefed us. And, uh, I thank you for uh, coming to us online, sir. Now I just thank you very much for your kind words, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, thank you, Dr. Shiv. Uh, now uh, let us move over to Professor Anand. Uh, 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 he is a luminary in the academic uh, uh, sector. Let me say, a former director of IIT from 2001 to 2011. A very long stint. Uh, he he has got uh, so many corrected awards. Uh, this Hadelia Award for uh, base re basic research in chemical engineering. I think that's a very noteworthy <laughs> thing. He is a pioneer, as uh, Dr. Shivan told. He is a pioneer who started the first online uh, education, and also he is a pioneer who was one of the first person to start uh, the the concept of startups and incubation uh, in IIT Chennai. So we feel, sir, that you are the uh, best suited, the most uh, luminous person with respect to discussing the space sector from the academia. So uh, thank you once again, sir, and over to Professor Anand for his comments and advice. Thank you. Thank you for the kind introduction. I'm sorry, my computer conked out. I had to change my machine in order to get reconnected. Uh, I want to thank uh, Dr. Shivan first. 
for uh, inviting me to this program. And uh, I want to congratulate the Department of Space for the timely creation of InSpace and NSIL. We are all admirers of ISRO, uh, both nationally and internationally, for developing indigenous end-to-end -end capability in space technology and space activities. We have several centers, each with a core competence that meets the requirements of one vertical at least. We have also successfully outsourced manufacture of some components to industries, especially the medium and small scale. So this activity in itself is not very new, but the fact that you are throwing open your facilities, you are thinking of throwing open and developing a mechanism by which this can be done, is I think very, very important. It's going to make a step change in the participation of private enterprise in your endeavors. Uh, I want to propose that one efficient way of doing this, of NSIL to approach its task, will be through the university research parks. Uh, I don't know if uh, the IIT Madras was the first to start a research park, and uh, this research park has been eminently successful. And since there are overlapping synergies, I want to talk about that a bit, and then suggest how uh, the research park, IIT Madras research park, can be used, or similar research parks can be used in advancing the goals that uh, the Department of Space has. Uh, today, innovation and entrepreneurship are central to the nation's successful participation in the global economy. Income from intellectual property rights is as high as 40% of the total income in some developed countries. We are far from that, very far from that. And fundamentally, the research university is the source of main source of creativity. Uh, creativity is of three kinds. Discovery and invention drive the university's basic research. Innovation, on the other hand, includes a, a critical economic component and is often about extracting value from creative understanding of what is already known. So it has to be successfully managed and we have not done that very well in, in our universities. It has to be successfully managed by what is called the idea factory approach. You bring unlike minds together, create the right atmosphere, give them freedom but carefully structure interactions. University Research Park does that, just that. And it's basically a property-based venture located near a university campus. It brings together unlike minds, faculty with a sound knowledge of fundamentals, students with their spirit to conquer the world, and R&D personnel from industry with their ability to identify ideas that can be converted to marketable products. The University Research Park, the URP, helps convert research ideas into innovative technologies houses R&D of companies, creates and nurtures startups, and drives technology like regional development. So URPs exist in 60 countries. We didn't have one till the IIT Madras Research Park was set up. In 2002, I looked at some of the reasonable fraction of the patents in Silicon Valley, because that's one of the most innovative places. We discovered that a lot of IIT names appeared, IIT alumni names appeared in the inventions, in the patents that, were, that came from Silicon Valley. I was looking at 95 to 97. But, uh, Louis Pasteur said, discovery is the result of chance meeting a prepared mind. And uh, I told the ministry that IITs have been preparing minds and chance has been meeting them in Silicon Valley. So I suggested that we should create the chance in our backyard. Nemichadi agreed. In 2002, we made the application. It took all of eight years to create the research park. It's a Section 8 non profit company, but what it has achieved is quite significant. We got 11.5 acres of land from the government and a 100 crore grant from the ministry. The total project was about 450 crores, and the money was raised in various ways. Startups are not part of research parks in most advanced countries, developed countries where venture capital is readily available. Uh, they are, however, startups are part of the IIT Madras Research Park by design. And in particular, of particular interest in the present context is how startups are fared in IIT Madras Research Park. A total of 210 deep tech startups. 
uh, founded and promoted by alumni students faculty of IIT Madras and in part co-founded by external entrepreneurs have been incubated till date together they valued at 7000 crores based on investments by vcs many are in the market and have generated a total revenue of 430 crores in the last financial year and created over 4000 jobs and 125 patents to put this in perspective in 2006 i was invited by the when i was director in IIT Madras, i was invited by the commerce secretary to come and receive an award for the university with the largest number of patents and i said there must be some mistake we had only six last year and the commerce secretary said others had less so but the funny thing is that we are a very innovative people we have done a lot of innovations but we have not patented any we haven't gotten into this habit the industry of course is ahead of us the industry does patent whatever might be economically fruitful later and uh, in creating the research path we have created a partnership large number of industries have taken space there and uh, now the park is a huge one it's 1.2 million square feet it has about 6000 r and d workers from the industry working there and we have a tremendous interaction with faculty students and and the number of ideas that have come is reflected in the patents from 6 we've gone to 126 a year so it's it's an enormous number and it has come mainly because we always have ideas we always had people with ideas in india but we have not done this patent thing very effectively. The industry, I, I realize, is much more aware of this. And the industry has helped us a lot in patenting ideas that have come up with the research path. So, my own recommendation for ISRO also, we have a lot of interaction with ISRO. We have an ISRO IIT cell in, IIT, in many of the IITs. And this cell has been working on many projects of interest to ISRO with a scientist from ISRO and a faculty member working together along with students. And the remarkable thing about young students is that they come up with ideas that you wouldn't have thought of or you forget to think about you know, after a while. And uh, this has helped a lot. And uh, in the uh, research part, for example, right now, we have about four startups, three of which are linked to ISRO in some sense. And uh, the facilities that ISRO is now promising to throw open the industry have already been thrown open partially to these people, partly because of contacts with scientists in this room. And uh, my recommendation to ISRO is that they should take a cell in the IIT Madras research park. The second phase has been completed. There is space available. I am selling this only because I think being there, right next to the IIT Madras campus, makes a huge difference. The faculty and the students and the industrial R&D worker are able to meet especially with good food being served in the canteen there. This is an important point that Bell Labs made long ago. They said, we think only when good food is placed before us. And uh, this has been done. And I think the interactions have been extremely successful so far. And DRDO has actually taken a whole floor. I would strongly recommend that space take a floor too. And that way your scientists will be directly involved with the startups that come up. And they'll be involved directly along with the faculty in IIT. And this combination, I, we have seen, has been very successful in the past. So I would strongly recommend that. And it would be nice to have a ISRO cell there because some scientists must be parked there from ISRO who can actually give good advice to startups and direct them in direct in the way the ISRO sees their products being useful to them. I think this is important. Handholding the startups at the initial stage is important. And uh, you will finally, my personal feeling is ISRO will be disproportionate returns in a few years from now. So we have an incubation cell in the research park that does the handholding very efficiently. And uh, to have ISRO scientists there uh, helping in this process would be a dream come to I'm not the director right now, but I'm sure Bhaskar Ramurthy, the present director, will agree with me this. And I hope ISRO takes up space in the research park or works through research parks in other IITs also. The other IITs have started the research park 10 years later. So they they but they are getting there. And I think any of them would be a very useful source to tap as far as ISRO is concerned. I want to wish ISRO all the very best. And I want to wish the new 
please uh, set up the new things that you have created. I want to wish them very well. I hope they succeed in creating this link and uh, leading to very useful progress. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, 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 Professor Anand. Uh, you have uh, very clearly focused on the um, uh, research park uh, achievements, and you have uh, highlighted uh, that uh, probably INSIL can uh, have the connectivity with the university to the research park. Also, you have uh, already uh, recommended that it's better to start a cell in IIT research, Chennai Park, or in some other IITs. We will take these points into account, sir. We are now running out of time. So before wrapping up, we have certain a uh, very a lot of questions that have come through the public because I think world over this is being watched now. A very good hit we have seen. So uh, I, I I will uh, just uh, 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 here present uh, some three questions and I request uh, Dr. Shivan to uh, respond to that. The first question is, uh, uh, what is the future prospects of ISRO? Uh, ISRO is uh, going to do the job it is uh, right now it is doing that is ISRO job is not going to be stopped or reduced that is our number one. Number two that uh, the more focus will be that, uh, put towards uh, capacity building and uh, new technology development because it's not that uh, we are not doing now. We are doing now because we are uh, both doing capacity building and uh, meeting the the public demand. So now the public demand will be that uh, I'm sure that will be taken care by the uh, industry or private people and uh, so we can spend more energy on the capacity for the development will be very fast and so that will be on board with the, uh, the advanced nation at the earliest. That is how we have our need. Uh, thank you Dr. Shivan. The next question is, can incremental space companies participate? In, uh, sorry, can international space companies can participate in Indian space program? Now, at present, that whatever the system we are thinking is with uh, only our Indian uh, industries, and uh, maybe this uh, this needs some uh, some more discussion. That maybe we will see that we data. Okay, sir. Now, one more one. Our next question is: Will ISRO continue to seek help from private industry? Yes, yes of course. course. Without, Without uh, private industry's help, ISRO cannot exist. You told uh, in your opening the, your presentation itself that eighty percent of that uh, activity is done in industries. Yeah. So that is also that 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 continue to be there. So without uh, participation of industry, that uh, ISRO cannot exist. And uh, how to manage any mission? With uh, low budget, oh, it is uh, very innovative innovations, innovative strategies we have to adapt. See, like uh, for any the strategy uh, with uh, difficult situation, uh, innovative that uh, solutions will exist. In that uh, today's morning, that uh, our Anand Mahendra told the story about uh, this one. That is when the Iranian Hasubu got that uh, this one with the uh, in difficult uh, difficult situation and they we are we could they could the god would find another method to overcome that one like that uh, for every difficult situation there is a st strategy that we have to do that is a part of that our uh, innovation and they have to do it. thank you so the final question being space in the strat uh, is in the strategic sector also Hope all precautions are taken for protecting the Indian security. Oh, exactly. There is a reason that our in space is uh, harm. That the uh, way that uh, way that uh, for like another industry to start, there is no mechanism. Way for uh, that uh, space activity, there is a mechanism. That's the exact reason. Yes, of the dual purpose and uh, risk involved, the safety, security involved, and that's all that uh, the in space mechanism will do. And uh, there is a purpose of the mechanism we, we thought of. Thank you, sir. And uh, now, with your permission, since time is running out, sir, I'll quick and uh, with the permission of dignitaries, let me quickly wrap up uh, what what has happened. Professor Vijay Raghavan made a very short uh, thought process where he stressed that uh, one of the points that he's brought out is why industry is not investing in R and D, which is uh, extremely uh, an essential factor if this uh, venture that we are opening up the sectors has to succeed. 
and one of the reasons what you was to uh, what you was uh, mentioning is with respect to industries not having a risk capital so the, the there is a requirement for risk mitigation and the one one of the solutions is to link academia as professor anand was also telling to uh, uh, the link the uh, academia and uh, utilize the talent and the material resources i think that's a very thoughtful suggestion uh, which can be further taken up sir and he was also stressing that uh, the infrastructure capabilities should be utilized uh, to the optimal uh, especially taking into consideration the dual uses that the space has sir uh, we will we will take all your advices sir anand mahindra as uh, already mentioned he stressed about three major drives uh, which respect to cost efficiency frugal innovation and high end capability with respect to technology and expertise so which is essential if this venture has to succeed and he also brought the interesting imagery of uh, narasimha which we have discussed uh, i i would say enough now uh, madam mahima datta uh, gave uh, an, an analogy with respect to how in the uh, vaccine sector the private public partnership has become extremely successful especially with the linkage with respect to academia where the research is uh, happening for the development of the vaccine and uh, she was also mentioning with respect to the uh, need for appropriate financial incentives which needs which is a point which needs to be further taken up and discussed because the uh, ultimately the entire thing depends on the finance and the, uh, most of the questions related to this are also from how how the financing is going to happen so and at the same time we also know that government the, the entire uh, exercise that the government is doing is to reduce its burden with respect to the expenditure related to this industry and uh, and uh, expecting and uh, and cajoling the industry to invest to go ahead with the space activity so this is a, a paradoxical situation which needs to be addressed further discussed and taken up uh, uh, mithal saab uh, Uh, we, we candidly talked uh, talked about uh, the requirement of uh, uh, light touch policies and the uh, need for very strong and security and uh, foreign policies sir i would like to tell you here that uh, we are uh, modifying our satcom policies our uh, uh, the earth observation related policies as well as uh, we are bringing a new navigation policy and also we are uh, we are thinking of uh, bringing some uh, uh, space exploration as well as launch vehicle policies and of course we have a, 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 a encompassing uh, space policy also all these are coming very soon sir so it will bring more clarity with respect to that uh, and uh, uh, professor anand again stressed upon the the role which academy can very effectively play and and he himself was a role model by uh, by innovatively making the research park which is still running successfully in iit chennai and he was stressing that ensil should uh, have a collaboration with the research park so that the university linkage can be effectively uh, uh, established and also he was recommending that uh, we need to have a cell in iit chennai regarding this so uh, i think uh, Uh, we have covered uh, most of the points that has been brought out we will we will uh, make a detailed report on this sir and uh, we will be we will be coming back to you first of all at this juncture let me once again thank all of you for spending your very valuable time i know how busy you people are uh, but you have uh, consented to be here and uh, share with uh, us all the thoughts and giving guidance to us and uh, i am sure now this gives us a lot of confidence to us also to see, say that the 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 reforms that we are going to uh, implement or already we have started implementing uh, will be a resounding success and it will going to transform the uh, the space industry uh, and the space activities in india so uh, let me thank you thank you everybody once again thank you so much jai hind thank you very much thank you thank you thank you so much thank you bye bye Okay. Let's see how many hits we have.